Okay, so we have no shortage of NVMe boards for Raspberry Pi 5. And being the fastest connection you can use on a Raspberry Pi 5, it's definitely recommended if you want to run an operating system and you want it to be nice and snappy. Uh, what you do need is a PCIe cable. And I now suggest that you get one that powers itself from the GPIO pins. Because if it is powered just from the PCIe cable and you plug other USB devices in, you can find that actually you'll get errors because it's taking too much power. So make sure that it's powered by the GPIO pins like this one. You can see PCIe cable and GPIO pins, uh, so it's taking power from there, rather than the USB sockets because they can only deliver so much power. Well, the latest solution I've got goes in a completely different direction and basically the board is powered and also powers the NVMEs and then the board powers the Pi. So it's not taking anything away from the Pi. And the reason they've done that, that more sort of extreme version, is because this board doesn't just do one, it actually supports four NVMe drives. So this is from 52Pi, and they call it a quad NVMe expansion board. And we've got a few things in here. We've got a, PC, a couple of PCIe cables, obviously a power cable to take the power from the board to the Pi. Uh, and we've also got a lot of bolts and standoffs and things like that and a screwdriver. So the book talks about the Armour Light V5 with the adjustable fan, which I have got, but I'm going to use the Ice Tower cooler because I prefer that. And I really like the way they've done it where they've got the Pi on top and the NVMe access on the bottom. So you can just turn it upside down and you can replace any of the four drives very, very quickly. So there's some standoffs that go on the bottom of the board. So here's the four standoffs that the Pi sits on. And this means that the USB-C is next to it. So that's what's gonna power the Pi. This must be the USB-C input where the 20 volt goes into. Now I have a bit too much room here because uh, these standoffs don't go far enough into here. The thread stops before it gets all the way. So I need to put a little bolt underneath here. Okay, so you can see they look loose at the moment, but they're going to screw into this board and that will just act uh, as a bit of a sort of shim so that we've got enough space and it's going to make it tight on the pie. Okay, so that's with the bolts in and there's no movement there at all. It's nice and solid and obviously this is the right height for the ice tower cooler to be spaced out. And the only reason I've adapted this is because I prefer this cooling. It just is more effective and quieter. But obviously you can use the armor case if you want it to be a bit more compact. So a bit of thermal paste on the CPU GPU. And let's pop that on top and screw that down. I can probably use the screws that they've supplied here for this bit. Let's go diagonal first. Okay, that's the last screw in. So let's have a look and you can see that I put too much paste on but I'm not worried about that. It's spread out both sides a little bit. Then we have USB-C cable. It's quite a long cable. It could be a shorter cable or they could have put something like you know one of these adapters in. Although because I've adapted mine for my ice tower cooler by adding these in that would be enough space for something like this not to work because obviously they have to be exact. Let's pop the fan in. Okay, so I should have plugged this in beforehand because you can't actually get to it very well. I think I probably can do it, but I'm not gonna bother doing it on camera because it will be a bit fiddly. And hopefully... Okay, so that took a while, but both sides of the PCIe cable are in now. I'm gonna have to put some rubber feet on it because the base of it at the moment is just metal, which I don't want on my surfaces. So I'll put some little rubber feet, which it doesn't come with. But if I ever get some with something else, I always keep them. And in fact, I might screw some screws in there to make it bigger bases. So these look pretty similar. And actually that means that I could unscrew the feet and use them for other projects if I needed to. Okay, so now I've got four of my own rubber feet on there. That feels much nicer. So what that means is uh, the power is next to all the rest of the USBs and the Ethernet connection. The only thing sort of left out on its own is the HDMI connection. So if you're using it headless, then everything can be all on one side. Now, I haven't got many 20 volt devices, but this Apple adapter is. So this is from my MacBook Air 
and what is it, 20 volt, 1.5 amp. And if I plug it into my Tapo plug adapter, this tells me how many watts I'm using. Okay, so it's booted up with my NVMe drive with my main OS on it, which is the one I always use. Uh, it was the one that was inside this case. And uh, everything is fine, but it took ages. And I think I've got a faulty PCIe socket on my original Pi 5. So the reason I've got an O on this is this was the pre-release Pi 5 that I was sent. And I'm sure I've used PCIe before with it, but uh, it doesn't seem to be working with the socket. Now, the black had come off at some point and I'd replaced it. I'm not sure if it's something to do with that or something's got damaged or whatever. But as you can see now, I'm actually using a separate Pi with a longer PCIe cable and uh, it's being powered separately. But I'm gonna piece it all together the same as I did this one and see if I can get this one working. Okay, so all up and running with my MacBook power supply, you can see in the plug here, with this very thick USB-C cable, which is rated at something like 250 watts it's capable of, uh, which the Mac power supply definitely isn't. Uh, so that's going into the board, and then we've got the USB-C from the board powering the Pi. I've got no error messages, everything is working okay. And uh, if we have a look at the screen, I've got the wiki here, so we've got some nice close-up pictures of this. So PCIe to Raspberry Pi 5. We've got all the boards and all the different mount points and everything on here. And obviously you can see it with the armor case there. This board not only provides a power conversion solution, but also serves as a high-speed storage expansion device. Equipped with a 20 volt power delivery input that converts the power supply to a stable 5.1 volt 5 amp output. They never seem to talk about how many amps, but my 1.5 amp at 20 volt is working fine. And if we have a look at my wattage plug, you can see currently with one drive, so the operating system is running from my 512 NVMe drive, currently using 7 watts of power. Obviously the more drives you're going to put on that, it's going to go up. But if we go on one of these converters, so if we say 1.5 amps and 20 volt, so my power supply is capable of up to 30 watts, so there's plenty of power in that Mac power supply. So the sizes of drives, 2230, 2242, 2260, and 2280. Ideal for use in Samba file systems or NAS setups. I might do that in a separate video at some point and play around with that. Although I was worried when I tried it first of all and couldn't get it to work, it was definitely something to do with that other Pi and the PCIe socket. But I was thinking that it didn't run an operating system from the NVMEs and you had to use it on an SD card and then have the storage, but it's not the case because I'm running this from an NVMe drive now. Because if we go through the instructions, so we have to add this bit into config.txt. So if we go to sudo nano boot firmware config.txt, you can see that I've added the two lines in here and the second line is the bit that gives us gen three speeds. And we can check if it's been recognized with these two lines and pop that in here. So you can see it's picking it up, four port PCIe. And they generally always say Gen 2 on the Pi 5, but we do get Gen 3 speeds on pretty much all the NVMe drives that I've tested. And then the other bit is LSBLK. So if we pop that in, so you can see the NVMe drive is showing up. But in their instructions, they were showing it with a SD card inserted. And I thought at one point it definitely needed an SD card and the drives wouldn't boot the OS, but as I say, I'm really happy that uh, it does actually work. And there's various different instructions about formatting drives and things like that. I'm not gonna worry about that. What I'm gonna do is shut this down and restart it with all four NVMe drives attached. So I've got four drives here in total. This one has got KDE Plasma on, which was what I was running just now. Uh, and these others have got either x86 operating systems on there or Orange Pi operating systems, uh, basically not Raspberry Pi operating systems, so it should still boot from that same one drive. And this one is a shorter one, so this is a 2230 drive. I've got these screws, and it does say that it's got holes for the other size of drives, so you can see there, actually it's a 2242 then, and you can see that that has a space, but there's nothing to affix it to. They're all in the 2280 space. And it looks like these are welded in. So I'm not sure if you're supposed to get an extra bit to 
to hold them in place. I'm not going to bother screwing these up for now because this is just a test to see if it works. Um, but I've also done this. So if you have a look at this, so this is a normal screw, but I've glued it onto one of these standoffs. So I've basically got one of these and I've just glued one of these on top like that. And it's actually really handy because it's you can just use it with your fingers to screw it up and unscrew it. Not sure why I haven't done this before because it is super convenient. There we go. So let's plug this in and see how much power it uses. Okay, so it's booted up fine with all four drives in place. And again, just that one power cable going in from my MacBook charger. And if we go back into terminal just to show that everything is working and we launch this one and this shows all the NVMe drives that are there. But we could also have a look in Gparted as well and show all the three drives and the fact that we can play around with them. So this is the operating system and then you can see we've got three more drives in here and I can select between them. See lots of partitions, must be Android I guess or Chrome OS and another one as well. Oh, unallocated. So it's not even recognized that one. I think that's Windows, I'm not sure. If I close that down and open up Raspberry Pi Imager and choose storage, you can see that I can write to any one of those three drives. Nice that it tells me that's the Patriot drive. And if we go to the file system, you can see they're all showing up here as well. Okay, so I definitely think I'll look at this in the future and see what other things I can do with it. But for now, just the ability to be able to plug in Another NVMe drive, when I run my main OS on an NVMe drive, is enough for me. You know, just, just two would probably be enough for me. But I do like the idea of having four drives and having access to it, or maybe doing something where it makes a backup, but it makes two backups at the same time, so two identical copies. I've been playing around with the slots, and it doesn't seem to matter which slot you put the NVMe drive into. So you can see here, I put the drive in the third slot, and this is Ubuntu booting up. But if I shut that down, I've got Raspberry Pi OS on this drive. So let's pop that into, say, this slot. And let's boot up. And that's Raspberry Pi OS. So it does seem to boot in order. So it starts with the lowest number drive first. Right, so with two drives attached, let's see how much power it uses. So at the moment it's saying 8 watts. I've also got a USB stick plugged into USB 3. Uh, I've got 8K files in here. This is about two gigs worth. So what I'll do is copy that and I'll paste it to, so this is my Ubuntu system, which is not the main drive, not the operating system, but this is the operating system. So effectively I'm gonna be copying a USB stick over to two separate NVMe drives. Let's see how much the power goes up. So let's paste that in and paste that in. It actually happens so quick <laughs> that I can't do both at the same time. I'm going to need a bigger file. Uh, so what have I got on here? So there's an OS there. Oh, there you go. So that's 4.9 gig. Right, okay. So that will be able to do both of those at the same time. So let's copy that and let's paste it here and paste it here. Okay, so what we're we using power-wise, uh, so both drives are definitely copying and it's 11 watts at the moment. So that's the most I've seen it go up to. Obviously, it could be even more if you're using four drives, but still well within my 29 watts. So that one, yeah, you can see that one going in the background and this one is nearly finished. So yeah, 11 watts. And no power warnings anywhere, which is nice to see because that stress of having all those NVMe drives is separate from the Pi. So I need to do a dig. Actually, I better delete those because that's uh, just taking up unnecessary room. So let's get rid of that. So again, this is the main operating system. This folder, which is writable, is Ubuntu. So I've got home and documents, no downloads. Let's delete those two. Uh, 
and also copied it into videos as well. There we go, let's tidy it up a bit and let's just delete all that. Everything seems to be working absolutely fine. So I'm going to remove the NVMe drive. So this is the Ubuntu one. Okay, not authorized to perform this function. Uh, let's try the USB stick. And that's been ejected. So it doesn't seem to eject the NVMe drive, which may be right because it's not removable storage really. Um, so I guess it sees it differently. And I need to do some speed tests. So press the Windows key and start typing diagnostics. And we can launch that. So let's have a look at that. So we've got sequential write speed of 383,000, random write speed 85,780, and random read speed of 41,269. And this is one of the King Spec drives, which is one of my slightly slower NVMe drives, but still pretty decent and yeah, feels incredibly snappy. It does seem to be working just like all the other NVMe boards, so there doesn't seem to be any detriment Okay, so thanks to 52Pi for sending this to test. Hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.